Hey everybody, welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast. This is my second edition of the Quick Talk Raw Podcast. So this is a little different spin on what I've typically been doing. I'm just going to talk to you man to man, man to woman, whatever the case is, and be real with you. Try to add value from my brain into your brain. And what I want to talk about right now is self-limiting beliefs. I just had this epic conversation with a friend of mine. We were talking about self-limiting beliefs and you know feeling bad for achieving things. And this has been very prevalent in my own life, and it's prevalent in a lot of people's lives. And you know, I'm a Christian man. I love the Lord. Some of you think that's crazy, and that you know we were just spawned out of a pile of goo or something. Now, I don't believe that. I believe we were created by a creator on purpose for a purpose, right? So how do I reconcile that with trying to achieve massive things in business? How do I reconcile that with trying to conquer stuff in my business, right? So here's the deal. Whatever family we were born into, we kind of come subconsciously pre-attached to these ideas of what we think success is supposed to look like. And when you start a new business or you're running your current business, what happens is we bump our head into these invisible ceilings. We bump our head into these these glass walls, right? And as we start to achieve a little bit of success, things can feel weird. And a lot of people, including myself at times, we do what's called self-sabotage. So it's like things are starting to work and you're starting to achieve your goals and it almost makes you feel uncomfortable. It almost makes you feel like, oh my gosh, like I'm not allowed to go past this level. I've reached my maximum level. Uh, and, and what happens on a subconscious level is people, they break down. They start pushing. They're, I'm, I'm sorry, they stop pushing. They stop doing the little things. They, they get complacent. And I don't think a lot of us realize we're even doing it. So you have people out there. I have a friend. I'll tell you a personal story here. There's a guy that really liked my wife when we were young. We were teenagers, you know, graduated high school. And this guy lived in the apartment above my in-law's uh, house. And he's a good guy, super smart, super smart guy. And he liked my wife, Ashley. Uh, but Ashley, you know, she was sold out to me for whatever reason. You know, I, I had her all in on Josh, right? And so me and him never really clicked, you know. <laughs> There's a little bit of tension there because, you know, I had the girl and he wanted the girl. Well, this guy... He today he's worth about a hundred million dollars. He's got a private jet, he's got Ferraris and Maseratis, and he's built a, a financial empire. The guy's crushing it. And you know, I don't talk to him personally almost at all. But I know people that still are connected with him. And the thing is, is like whatever whatever the, the thought in your brain is of whatever you're worth, you're worth so much more than you think you are. This guy came from a, a family of poverty came from a hard life and he was able to just smash through every self-limiting belief that he could all the way up to making humongous amounts of money and then life is not about money but life is about conquering stuff and maybe that means building a million dollar business for you maybe it means building a two hundred thousand dollar business for you i don't know there's no wrong answer but the point is is we have to knock off the self limiting beliefs in our lives we have to identify them we have to call them out and we have to execute them. We have to get aggressive in knocking them out. One of the best ways you can do that is through self-analysis, is through being honest with yourself, is through examining your own thought life, your own behavior. How do you speak to yourself when things are going well? How do you speak to yourself when things are going bad, right? The way that we speak to ourselves on a subconscious level and, and a conscious level, the way we value our own time and our own um, value to, to the world, like the way that we value our ability to, to create change in the world, a lot of that stuff is kind of hard-coded into us at a young age and we don't realize it. So I just want to encourage you guys to push, to go. One of the phrases I like is to, to leave the cave, club something, and drag it home. And there's a reason that men love movies like Braveheart. You know, it's like we watch these movies, and the epic hero, he does all this epic stuff, and he lays down his life for his nation and for his woman, and, and at the, the end of the movie, it's like horrific, right? He dies. And even as, he, as he's dying, he's unwavering in his position, right? 
And I think that's amazing. And there's a there's a reason that we are attracted to stories like that. It's because we really secretly want that type of story in our own life. Deep down, we want to live an epic life. Most people want to. And I'm a, I'm a believer also that the reason that men are so obsessed with sports, and I was one of them for a lot of years, is because we want to live vicariously through someone else's success. We want to watch a sporting event where our team dominates and wins, and in a weird way, kind of in a pathetic way, we celebrate when they celebrate. We feel like we won too when they won. But here, here's the problem. That stuff is an imitator. That stuff is fake. That's not you living an epic life. In the culture that we live in today, especially in America, there's a lot of weird political stuff going on. There's a whole culture shift going on. We are, we are living through a very historic time. The way that you know, the next generation views their values and their, their self-worth, the way that a lot of younger people feel that they're entitled to things, that's a profound, profound change in what America always has been historically. And I think that even inadvertently, good men fall into the same trap, including me at times, including me, absolutely. So I want to encourage you to remember a few things. You are responsible for you. No one owes you anything. You are not entitled to have a big, beautiful business that serves your family. You're not entitled to have a certain amount of personal income. You're not entitled to live a life that's free of adversity and nothing ever comes against you. You're not owed that. The universe owes you nothing. So when we accept that, only then can we really take action and move forward and make changes in our life and in our business to get the, the desired result. And if you're struggling with that, hopefully this resonates with you because it's a very real thing. It's a very, very real thing. And, you know, I, I don't want to go down the cheesy road of being overly dramatic, but I'm telling you, I work with a lot of business owners and a lot of people have this problem. They get stuck. Their business goes flat. Their marriage goes flat. The relationship with their kids go flat. We all hit walls. We all hit dips. And we can come out of it. But we have to leave the cave, club something, and drag it home. We have to take responsibility. And regardless if you're a Christian or not, I'm going to leave you with the story of King David. King David is a historical figure. He really existed. He did all kinds of stuff. And he was a king of Israel a really long time ago. When he was a teenager, he conquered a Philistine warrior named Goliath in front of thousands of adult warriors. He, as a teenager, walked out in the middle of the battlefield while everyone was so scared they were peeing their pants. They couldn't deal with this guy, right? The giant Goliath. And this teenager walks out. And he slays Goliath in front of the entire nation. And he doesn't stop there. He kills Goliath's brothers as well. Then he doesn't stop there. He chopped off Goliath's head with his own sword. Then he became the king of Israel. And, and <laughs> from there conquered nations. And he did all these things. And, you know, he was focused on what the mission was. He was focused in his faith in God. And he knew that his life was designed to have a big purpose and have a big impact. And he didn't waver from that. And he was super fortunate to believe that at a really young age. So maybe your goals aren't that ambitious, but they're still important to you and your family. Maybe you just need to get your business more automated so you can spend more time doing something else. Maybe you just need to, you know, not be so stressed out so you're not as grumpy all the time. I, I don't know. Everybody's story is different, but the principle is the same. We have to take action. We have to walk out there and we have to slay the Goliath in our own lives and in our own business. And we can't do that without two things, taking responsibility, understanding that no one's going to save our day. And the second thing is taking massive, massive action every single day. You know, he, he, he couldn't have sat and strategized for a month about the best way to sling the stone and try to kill Goliath. That would have been fruitless. It's pointless, right? He walked over to the river. He grabbed his rocks. He walked to the battlefield, and he threw that thing right into the forehead of that big, giant beast and killed that sucker. So, hey, it's a little more impassioned than normal, 
but I want to be authentic and real with you guys. And this is really what's been on my mind today. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do get any value out of this podcast, I haven't asked this before and I need to. I need you to rate this podcast in iTunes. I need you also to share it with people that you care about, people that can have value from it. It's going to help me tremendously to get my iTunes ratings going and to get more shares, to get the word out, because the only way this is going to spread is really through you. So God bless you all. I, I hope you all get the businesses and lives you always wanted. And until next time, this is Josh. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.